cataractcoach.com. Two jerky pulls to save the capsular rexus. It's an alternative to the little rescue technique for a run on capsular rexus. So you can see it's a very dense cataract, brunescent, with some whitish features, stained with tripan blue dye. Starting the rexus here, grabbing the capsule, making a nice generous rexus, but watch carefully. As it goes around, bam, it runs out. Two designer support, so grab it, and two jerks. One, two, and it brings it back on track. Now, we've seen the little technique, which is similar, but pulling backwards. Dr. Mohanta here calls this technique two jerky pulls, and it really does work. Let's watch it in slow motion. So incising the capsule here with the forcep to start the rexus, grabbing that, and as the rexus turned here, you'll see it wants to run out. As it starts to run out here, it's going to grab the capsule, and it's going to go right about there, bam, out to the designer support. So what he's going to do is grab the capsule and have two jerky pulls, one, two, once it's grabbed, one pull and another pull, and that gets it back on track. So again, a good alternative to the little rescue technique. You should certainly know both of these. I just thought this video was very interesting because it showed how effective this technique really is. Now, certainly in a white category, this that's dense, you do want a generous rexus. This one's not perfectly uh, five millimeters or so. It's a little bit excessive in certain areas, but you know what? That doesn't make a difference. Think about this. This patient has essentially no vision, maybe hand motion vision, maybe wind perception vision if you move your hand real fast in front of their face. So this patient's going to be absolutely blown away and so happy with the result of this surgery. And you can see the key here is that the rexus is totally intact. It's, it's um, curvilinear and there are no areas that can run out. So this two jerky pulls technique actually worked really well. I like it. Now going over the phaco probe, and this nucleus can be chopped. Now, you know, these tend to be a little fibrous. See that yellowish, brownish look? That's them, some of that density. And these can have that posterior plate that's sometimes hard to separate. So let's see, holding the nucleus with a phaco probe, and then a chopper goes in, and splitting the nucleus, almost dense nucleus. And there it is. Here's a split, but you have to fully propagate it. Look, you have to split it apart. Look how it's like fibrous, almost like splitting wood here. You really have to go around here. So now again, grooving it maybe or debulking it a little bit more and get that crack all the way propagated. Split it more there. Almost. Now you'll get two. That's two full halves. Now you fully separate it. Now you can get the first half here and now separate it into smaller quadrants. And again, spend the time to make sure it splits. That chop didn't propagate. So go through, go through until it fully propagates. Now look, tilting the nuclear quadrant to get that apex, that densest part first. And then the rest can come down pretty easily. Remember the endonucleus, the center, that apex of that quadrant, that's the densest. And now it can be chopped. Obviously, Dr. Mohan is a fantastic surgeon. This looks like a beautiful case. But keep in mind this idea of two jerky pulls. Sometimes you can't get that little maneuver done, and this two jerky pulls method works great. Plus, it's more fun to say. It's kind of a cool name. So that first quadrant or first half is being removed pretty easily. That looks great. And then the second half will come up. Again, being cautious here to minimize the total phaco energy. Make sure you don't cause a phaco wound burn. Here's that chop again. And you really have to spend some time to separate out those fibrous pieces from each other. And again, each quadrant, that apex, which, is, which represents the central endonucleus, tends to be the densest and requires the most phaco energy. Here at the end, remember there is very little, if any, cortex remaining. Nothing is weighing down the capsule bag. So be cautious as this last piece is removed that you don't get the posterior capsule coming up and causing any issues at the phaco tip. So two jerky pulls. You know what? We're all going to run into this one day or another where the need to rescue a run-out rexus and this technique, you know, really works quite well. End of the case here looks fantastic. There's that last piece. Notice how he slowed down slow motion. Smart, smart move. Just to make sure you have good chamber stability and you're not going to let that posterior capsule come up. And now it's cleaned up quite nicely. I want to see at the end here, show you where the lens is in the bag and see what kind of overlap we got. Let's speed up the end here. So here we go, a little viscoelastic, and now a Simcoe cannula to clean up the cortex. Get all that cleaned up nicely. And let's see the lens going in. And so this patient is going to have an amazing recovery. Can you imagine? From essentially no vision to great vision, boom, overnight in, the, in a brief procedure here. And plus, we had fun doing the surgery, even better. Let's see what we're going to do now. Hydro implantation, there you go. An acrylic lens in the bag. And that looks really nice. And see, it's pretty good overlap. 
It's enough overlap really to keep the lens perfectly uh, stable for the rest of the patient's life. So a beautiful case here. I want you to definitely remember you can do the two jerky pulls technique next time you need to rescue a radialized capsularexis. Also remember, we have a video contest coming up, a resident surgical video contest. Any of these young residents or postgraduates from all over the world, you're welcome to submit a video. Details here on your screen, but if you want the clickable links, you got to go to cataractcoach.com. Go to the website, click on today's video. You'll get the hot links and you can follow through. Please submit your video. You can win. I'll write you a check.